Welcome back to the sixth episode of Real College Reviews. I'm your host, Jude Bazerman, and I'm here with my great friend, Gina. Gina, how about you introduce yourself a little bit more? Hi, I'm Gina Stromolo. I'm currently a sophomore at University of Rhode Island, and I study psychology. The psychology degree, I just want to ask right off the bat, what's, what's your end career goal? What do you want to do it? You know, as a big question, but what do you want to do with your life? I'm hoping I could work in some sort of hospital setting. So I kind of want to work more in like an emergency room, but I don't really know with that. So just in some sort of hospital setting. Yeah. And I know when I was researching University of Rhode Island, psychology came up as the second most uh, popular major, at least according to Google, that that could be, you know, give or take a couple percentage points. Do you see that, you know, really in your classes? Like, is it it, the people you meet? Is it like a big psychology school or, you know, what are some other big majors at URI? Yeah, we have a lot of we have a lot of psychology majors. My classes, my lectures for my psych classes are usually around like 200 people. And my roommates were all I was in a suite. So I had three other roommates. My roommate roommate is a kin major, but my other two sweet mates were psychology majors. So I know a lot of people who go there that are psychology majors. It's pretty big there. No, really, that that is useful. So besides psychology, what are some other popular majors that you are? Business is pretty popular. Nursing is really popular. I'd say those are pretty much like the three big things, psychology, business, and nursing. And URI is it's a fairly large school. I'd say it's on the larger side. It's about slightly under fourteen thousand undergraduates. Yeah. In your classes, are they large lecture halls? Are they more on the smaller side, like twenty twenty five kids? What's your experience been with the class and the class size? I've had a mix of both. So all my lectures are usually around two hundred people, but then we do have smaller classes for those lectures, like recitations, which will only be like thirty people. And then my like other classes, like my language classes or my English classes, those are only about like 30, mm-hmm. 40 people. And I know my roommate at, at Syracuse, he had an 8 a.m. big lecture hall with like 300 people for like an intro level math. And it was a struggle from every single day to go. I, I just want to ask, did you or anyone you know have those same like 8 a.m. huge lectures? And, and did you go? Did you skip? And if you skipped, you know, did you still pass? Is, what's some advice for anyone listening who has an 8 a.m. At, at a bigger size school with those those big lecture halls? Do not take an 8 a.m. When I took my 8 a.m., I was like, it's going to be the same thing. Like, I woke up, like, the same time for high school. That's what everyone thinks. It's totally different. And I did have an 8 a.m. last semester, and I made sure I will never have an 8 a.m. again <laughs> because I stopped going to mine. I think I went maybe 13 times in the entire semester. Out of what, 30 classes? Probably. So slightly under <laughs> Yeah, half. yeah, slightly under half. But I still passed with an A-. minus. So I, does it really depend? First of all, 8 a.m. is the right of passage. Even if you don't want to get one for like a gen ed class, something you need for your major, it, you know, it, it might be necessary. I've been told that from, you know, every guidance counselor and, and upperclassman at college. But also... <clears throat> Does it? I guess it's the professor, right? Because some 8 a.m.s, they could have mandatory attendance. That counts towards your grade. I, just going off of professors at University of Rhode Island, are most of them like pretty laid back with that stuff? Or are they more strict? And are they accessible too? Like, can you? Are they easy to talk to during office hours? Or is it kind of a hassle just to get a hold of them? A lot of them are pretty efficient with getting back to you quickly. And a lot of the professors are pretty lenient, I'd say. They like... Obviously, when it comes down to attendance, they don't want you missing every single class, but a lot of them, it's more like, rely, I like don't know the word for it, but like you, you're kind of reliable for your own work. Yeah, for your own work and for your own attendance. So they kind of trust you since, I mean, you're in college now, they kind of trust you to show up and like do all the work and stuff. But obviously, at times, if you're missing every single class, some professors might not even realize, but then other professors will probably, like, alert you about it and say, like, you should be coming to class. Mm -hmm. I've never had that issue, but... I mean, I'd say I kind of lucked out with like all my professors and they're pretty lenient and just... Were they, you know, were they easy to learn from that type of stuff too? Most of them were pretty easy to learn from. I just had one professor that was a little bit like... Everyone does that. Yeah, it's a little the, out there, a little it's too the strict, one, you know, she's like the that. professor and everybody, you know, kind of knows, has the same opinions about her. She was just the hardest to learn with and she was very like, 
not lenient just, and, and not just very professor. like yeah just not yeah. all that but the rest of my professors I did really like them and I'd say they worked like really well with like communicating and like making sure that you know you get all your grades mm-hmm. in and that you're doing the best you can in the class absolutely and and you said that that one professor you didn't really like too much and you said most other students had the same opinion did you learn that just from talking to them or, you know, rate my professors? I always ask on the on these shows. It's a great tool to use. And usually it's everyone says it's very accurate from my experience has been very accurate too. do you have anything to say about rate my professors? So rate my professor had like, is it even possible to get like zero stars? Because <laughs> I think, I think be. she did not have over one star. That's but then also do. I was in that class with my roommate and my suite mate. Mm-hmm. And I had a couple other friends in that class. Everybody just knew and everybody would talk about it. So it wasn't just like a one person thing where they're like, oh, I don't like this professor. Like everybody was on the same like page almost with her. Like they all had like everybody had the same like opinions Issues about her. Yeah. And you've, you've mentioned your roommate and your suite mate a couple a couple times now. Mm-hmm. We kind of just got going. How was your experience dorming your freshman year at the University of Rhode Island? I got pretty lucky because usually freshman year dorms are where you just have you and your roommate and then a communal bathroom that whole type of vibe but I got lucky because of my major they're switching it back like in the fall to how it was but for my year they kind of like ran out of housing so I was put because of my major in a suite so I had me my roommate and then kind of like a Jack and Jill style where we had the bathroom And then that connected to my suite mate's rooms. So I honestly liked my dorm. It was like a pretty good size. Mm. And I do honestly miss my dorm. Really? But I mean, being in it for like long amounts of times, like it's obviously you kind of just want to go home. You want to be able to like get out of the dorm. But I didn't really mind dorming other than the fact that if you want like time alone, sometimes it's going to be hard. Yeah, with the roommate in there. Because, yeah, Yeah. your roommate, you're always going to be with your roommate or they're always going to be in the room. So it's kind of hard to have time for yourself. But you kind of learn to adjust and, like, go off of your, like, roommate's schedule and stuff. Like, you learn it. So you're able to kind of, like, correlate things with that. But I had a good experience. I loved my roommate. She just – she left yesterday. She was here visiting. Oh, really? Yeah. So, yeah, I had a pretty good experience overall. I always love hearing that, but one thing that kind of just sparked, sparked, got the gears turning in my mind, you said URI ran out of housing. Uh, did that happen this year? Like, is that a normal thing at URI? How is housing going, you know, past freshman year where it's guaranteed to sophomore year and, and your other upperclassmen years? I was homeless for five days. Not please, like, please act- okay, yeah. so basically what happened was it's kind of like a lottery pool with the housing but they do it based on the athletes get first day pick yeah that's a normal honors thing. college gets second and then the third day it starts gpa so i think third to like the fifth day is gpa they do it by gpa yeah so we got it on the third day because of like our gpas which was like the first day it could be there was no housing left so we just got like one room but like all of us there was four of us were split up so we were like we're not taking this like this is awful and so we ended up like looking and getting a realtor and we ended up like finding a house for next year but it was just a whole thing housing does really suck at like my school It's been a thing forever, like, again, with now they're going into triples freshmen because we don't have enough room because they keep over-admitting every year. And that's a theme at a ton of schools. Syracuse over-admits. I think Northeastern, they send Mm -hmm. kids abroad now because they over-admit so much. And in hotels, I know some people are at, like, Tampa. It's crazy. Yeah, Tampa's really bad with that stuff, too. And and if they go by GPA, right? And you said you had the first day and there was no yeah. room left. Wh- what happened to the kids that have the second and third day? I mean, like, they're just royally screwed. Nobody really. got housing. Like, it was awful. I, I mean, I don't even... <laughs> URI, I know academically it's, it, academically it's a pretty good school, but I, <laughs> they got to figure out the housing Through stuff. housing, it's not a good school. <laughs> but besides the housing, I know you've had a good time up at URI. You enjoyed a lot. What's a typical student like, you know, girl and guy, because I know it's very different at college. And do you see yourself as a typical URI student or do you not really fit that mold? Like, what are some characteristics that, you know, someone who goes to URI usually has? 
I'd say I pretty much fit it like the I don't want to say like stereotype but I guess like you know the typical mold. typical yeah a lot of people and a lot of like the girls I met and stuff were all like almost the same like we like to go out on weekends we like to like have fun and stuff but we're also like very serious with our work because I like love to go out and stuff but I was always very on top of it with yeah. my schoolwork and always made sure to like get everything done before or if I like had to do it after like a weekend or something I made sure to get it done like right away yeah and for guys most of the guys at my school are frat guys like oh backwards hat you know yeah. chat if you don't rush you're not getting yeah. in stuff like that honestly yeah that kind of is but i mean all of like my like guy friends at school like i like they're not like, really are like, they good guys like that the yeah the they're day. good guys yeah. i'd say the girls are like usually nice i haven't like really met anybody at my school who i like don't like yeah Obviously, like, you know, people are going to have, like, uh, uh, their yeah, issues that's and stuff. There's 14,000 people. Yeah, There's, exactly. Not everyone's going to be amazing. Yeah. But, yeah, I'd say overall that's kind of, like, the vibe of, like, the people from my school. It's, like, going out and, like, loving to go out because my school's a pretty big party school. Yeah. But also people, like, getting their work done and, like, making sure they're on top of everything. So really it's like a work hard, play hard. Like, yeah, obviously yeah. we love to go out. Let's go out. Let's have a great time. We only have four years in college, but, you know, we're also here to get a degree and do well in the classroom. Yeah. And, you know, that that's great. I mean, y you're not paying just to party. You can do that anywhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, some people would disagree, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> glad it's not you. Yeah. You know, I know you brought up how it's a big frat campus. Getting into frats, this is no matter what campus is, is not just at URI. It's a lot different for guys and girls. Can you just describe, like, you know, obviously I'm a guy. I'm not in a frat at Syracuse. Can you describe, you know, getting into a frat as a girl compared to getting into a frat as a guy for, like, a typical party? So I rushed my, like, last fall, like, the fall of my freshman year. Yeah. I ended up dropping, but I'm going to go back and, like, re-rush in the fall. Mm -hmm. And for girls... It's definitely a lot easier to get into parties and stuff unless it's like a social or anything. But a lot of times if they're a social or specifically for a frat and sorority, they turn into opens a little bit later in the night. So we do have a lot of opens. But for guys, it's hard to get in if you don't know somebody. So I know my guy friends at my school all knew people from like every frat and every sports team. So they never had trouble getting in. Yeah. But if you don't know anybody and you just show up, they're like, we'll have no mercy and be like, get out. So really just knowing someone's the key, whether or not you're, you're yeah. in a, you know, a Greek life organization, if you know someone, yeah, even if you're not in one, you could get in. Yeah, basically. And the campus as a whole, right, from a purely look standpoint, is URI a pretty campus? Like walking around, is it like, oh, this is, looks pretty nice, like I like being here? Or is it more like, ah, these buildings use an upgrade, the lawn's not cut? What do you, What do you think? I honestly love my campus, especially in the fall with all the colors. Like, I think New England just in general is, like, so pretty. Absolutely. Just, like, no matter yeah. when it is. Yeah. But the fall is my favorite season. So my school just looks so, like, pretty in the fall. Like, that's honestly one of, like, the reasons I chose it. Just because of, like, the whole campus look. Our dorms, which are on a completely different, like, side from where, like, the academic buildings are and stuff... Those are a little run down, but they're starting to like renovate them. So we're getting like, yeah, I mean, the if they're running out of housing, nicer. they better at least make the housing exactly. they have nice. Yeah. So those are kind of like a little iffy, but other than like the dorms, I mean, some of them are pretty nice. I'd say the campus is really pretty and I love it a lot. And something that's interesting that you said too, is that your, your dorms and the academic buildings on campus are on completely different sides. Yeah. I'd never heard of any campus doing that until really? the other day when my friend Ryan was on talking about Virginia Tech. They have the same exact thing. Mm -hmm. So I guess it's kind of a normal thing at, at bigger colleges where the dorms and there's almost like a line down the yeah. middle of campus. URI is like that as well. So ours is more like our dorms are on like almost the outskirt, I'd say, of the campus. Like not fully outskirt, but like yeah. at the bottom of the campus. Most of them are just like on a strip and... They all just, like, link together. Like, there's a couple that might be, like, a little bit out of place, but they're only just, like, on the other side of the yeah. street. So, all the dorms are pretty much on, like, one side, one little area of the campus. And it honestly makes it, like, a lot easier because if you're going to, like, yeah. see your friends or something. You don't have to walk 20 a different minutes dorm. across in, like, yeah. the, the Rhode Island winter because it, it gets cold in windy. Oh, yeah, it's awful there in the winter. <laughs> but I can't talk. We can't talk about dorms, really, without talking about you know, the dining hall. Because if you're living on campus, you got to eat dining hall food. 
Most people say it's not great. URI, what's the what's the dining hall situation like there? Honestly, the dining hall really isn't like that bad. We have a lot of like varieties of it. So we have two dining halls. And so one of them, it's more for breakfast. And mm. then the other one's more for like lunch and dinner. Interesting. So at the one that's like breakfast, we have like an omelet station where you make your own omelets and stuff. And then they have like a burrito bowl, like where you make your own like burrito or burrito Mm -hmm. bowl. And then the food's honestly pretty good. The pizza is not it, but coming from New Jersey. Yeah, yeah, no, the pizza's not good, but the pasta's fine. They have like a salad bar, like they have pretty much everything. And then in the other dining hall, they have a deli. So that you could get all sorts of like sandwiches and stuff you get there. creative with that type of stuff mm-hmm. so you don't get sick of it yeah, yeah so it's it's just good like there is a variety like you're not gonna be eating the same foods every day if you don't want to i guess i kind of stuck with eating a lot of the same things but i mean i didn't mind it because the food wasn't like awful it wasn't bad, and obviously like... i'm gonna change it up every like yeah, few yeah. days but, but you, you had your rotation of foods like, yeah one day it's like you know cold cut sandwich one day it's like I, soup i'm just throwing that out yeah. there i don't know if that's true but <laughs> there is everyone soup. falls into their habits which is a great it's a great thing especially if the food is good yeah because like, then we have URI. dining dollars too which is like you get a certain amount every week so with my dining plan i'd get 45 dollars a week and we have like things you could get for dining dollars. So I got Starbucks every day that was on my dining dollars. They have sushi. They have a whole little corner store which has everything for dining dollars like yeah. chips, fruits. So that's also what made it easier because it's going onto your dining dollars. So it's not like you're like taking out your debit card and like using that. So it's good. Like I'd say there is a variety. Like I was getting like a lot of different foods like at a time so i'd say it was pretty good the food wasn't bad and i'd say the variety is pretty good that's always that's i love to hear that because syracuse not always the best with that and uri it's in kingston right in rhode island south kingston yeah south kingston is it it, what do you would you ever go out in the south kingston do you more just stay on campus when you're looking for something to do on a weekend like a party so on our campus we have frat circle which is a road on our campus which has all the sororities and frat houses Mm -hmm. Most of the frat houses, all the sororities are on campus. We have a majority of the frats, but not all of them are on the campus. But South Kingston's pretty small. And, like, honestly, if you were to leave my school in a car, you'd have to drive, like, seven minutes in each direction to find find something something that's other than, like, fields. So I'm kind of, like, in the middle of nowhere. But, like, I mean, ten minutes, you're out into, like... A town. A town, like Narragansett, which is like the big beach town. That's the beach, right? Yeah. It's only like 15 minutes away. And a lot of people get houses in Narragansett when they live off campus. So a lot of the parties will like be there and stuff. So you just Uber or sometimes there's like shuttles going there. So it's, everything's pretty convenient Mm -hmm. in the area. So other than like just being in the middle of grass and there, there's some stuff to do outside of campus yeah there is once you get past that there's a lot to do so what do you usually do besides besides partying like if i'm not a big partier but i still want to get out and do stuff is there anything else to do at the university of rhode island on a weekend or is it more just like parties greek life and then school well so we have the beach which is super close we have a couple of beaches so me and my friends we would love to just like sometimes like take one of their cars and just like drive down to the beach obviously when it was like nicer out we'd actually like go to the beach and like tan and stuff but in like the off season we would just sometimes go sit in our cars sit on the rocks and just like sit on the beach there's we have like movie theaters nearby which like I've never like went to the movies but Massachusetts isn't that far so a couple of times like we've gone to places in Massachusetts just to do something for the day yeah I'd say there's a decent amount of things to do we would just usually during the day we'd go out if we wanted to like get a change of scenery like we have the which providence is very much mall. needed at college yeah. yeah so we have the providence mall gambling's legal legal at 18 <laughs> so we'd go to the casino sometimes <laughs> just like stuff like that so we do have a decent amount of things providence being it's 40 minutes away but it's also not like you can make a day trip awful there. you can make a day trip yeah. there's a lot to do in providence and then narragansett just being a beach town there's a lot to do there too <clears throat> absolutely yeah and you talk about, you know, going going to Providence or taking a day trip anywhere. Are you allowed to have a car there as a freshman? Or are there, like, certain rules to that? How, how does it go? Because I know some schools, they, they you know, no freshman can have a car and others are more laid back where, like, anyone can have a car. So if you have a medical or, like, just, like, an excuse almost like that, you get to have your car on campus. 
but freshmen initially like aren't allowed to have their cars on campus but my roommate had hers but she didn't have it directly on campus she parked it at a parking garage which was free for like Okay. however long yeah that you would be there so she would park there and if Smart. we wanted to go take her car we would just get there's a bus that goes directly to there it's two dollars sometimes we'd uber but usually the bus because it's obviously cheaper yeah directly to where her car's parked and that's how we would get it sometimes towards the end of the year on like the weekends and stuff and our school got i'd say more like laid back with it she'd pay pay for like a parking pass yeah just to keep it in a lot like behind Closer. our dorm yeah so that was pretty, like, nice. It was nice to have, like, at least one person with the car so that we could get out, like, yeah, if we wanted to. look at different things. And URI, I just want to, you know, move move more towards this. It's a Division One school, but I never really hear about it in the grand scheme of, like, sports culture. Because you go down south, it's like Alabama, Georgia, all mm. these big schools. Like, it's all about the sports. That's the big thing there. Even up north, you know, Notre Dame, Michigan, Ohio State, like, they're mm-hmm. big sports schools. You all right? Does like anyone go to the basketball football games, or is it just kind of an afterthought? They're pretty big. Our basketball games are definitely bigger than our football games, but I've been to both. They're both pretty fun. We didn't do super good in basketball this okay, year, yeah. but I mean the basketball games are really fun. I had more fun at the basketball game than I did the football game. Yeah, but maybe it was because it was inside and at the football game it was like super <laughs> hot. But I'd say. Yeah, usually the only time I say you would hear about my school is if they're in, like, March Madness yeah. and if they're, like, doing good. And I know they're in March Madness. They they're were last bit. year, yeah. but they didn't do good. So they didn't really go far, so no one really, like, heard about it. I mean, URI, always, I always put them going far in my bracket. They're they're a cool school. I like URI. Yeah, it's, I like Rhode it. Island's a great vibe. Yeah. But even though Rhode Island's amazing and you love it, clearly I think you made the right decision, at least hearing from what you've said so far. What what were some other colleges you were considering? And um, why'd you choose URI? I was considering New Haven and I think that was like and Coastal Carolina. So it was between those two and URI? Yeah, so the thing with I liked all the schools except when I went to go visit Coastal, I didn't like having to do the whole plane ride thing and just like the kind yeah, that's of a big part. I guess like the like almost like reputation of the school yeah, we, like we, don't you said you is kind of like a, a work hard play hard school yeah you know, the, co- coastal's kind of just like a play hard play hard school. yeah so i didn't like doing the plane thing and i was like i also don't want to sit in a car for like 15 hours to get to and yeah. from school new haven was nice but it was a little too small for me and it was it had more of like a modern look to it and i wasn't really like super into the mm-hmm. modern look you or i is a very like older campus and stuff which where their buildings are older but they still look like great and then obviously we do have some more modern like builds on the campus but it's more of like an older looking school and I chose URI because ever since I was a kid my mom went to URI so I've been going there for a really long time to visit like family in Rhode Island and stuff so she's always taken me to the campus so that's always kind of been like the school I wanted to go to so when I got in it was actually like a big deal for me to go yeah i was like super excited because it's been my dream school for like a really long time it's really it was like you or i or bust and those other ones were kind of more or less backup options that you were yeah so as soon as i got into you or i and found out like the whole like money situation with it obviously and stuff i knew i was like going straight there and it was just like drop everything else i don't care and i just you know committed there pretty fast after i got accepted and here we are now. So. <laughs> happy, happy as can be at URI. Yes, definitely. And, and as we, you know, sort of begin to wrap up here, what's one sentence you would use to describe URI to someone who's either going there or applying there or looking there? I would just say, like, don't, like, really lose yourself to, like, the partying and stuff. Like, I get that it's a huge part of college, but, like, also just stay focused. So, I mean, go out, have fun, but... Make sure you're also prioritizing your work and all that stuff because, I mean, you're there for a reason. So, you know, have fun. Yeah. Not only do I think that's a great piece of advice for URI prospective students, but 
any student in in the country. Really, yeah, I don't really know a specific one for my school. No, but I'm yeah, kind of... and that, that's fine because I think that's one of the the best things that someone going to college can hear. Really, like, because you could be like, you you go out and party every single night of the week if you really wanted to, but that's just not sustainable. And really, you're not gonna have fun if you do that. Yeah, the it... whole point of partying is like you you worked hard all week. Let's let's have fun with friends. Let's let it loose. Yeah, at least that's what I think. And, and as we wrap up, Gina. Thank you very much. And is there anything else you want to add on about URI or just college, applying to college, anything about the co- anything about college in general before we, we wrap up here? Just about college in general. Don't stress yourself out because I know when I was going through like admissions and stuff, it was super easy for me to like get in my head and be like, what if I don't get accepted anywhere and stuff? But I know it's hard in times like that, but do keep a po- positive mindset. And I mean, everything's going to work out the way it's supposed to. So, I mean, just let things fall into place and you should be good and have the best few years of your life. Gina, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time and coming on. I wish you the best of luck in your next three years at URI and obviously beyond. I'm sure I'll talk to you soon. Again, thank you so much. This is amazing. Thank you for having me.